Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Pug Cameras, and today we're gonna to be checking out this lens, the Sigma 105 millimeter F 2.8 macro lens. Whew, that's an interesting lens because I don't get to shoot macro as much as I'd like. I actually find it really interesting because of the subject matter. It's not something that you tend to see, obviously in your day-to-day -day life, you know, things incredibly up close, making the small, much larger, more visible. It's a really interesting type of photography. So I'm always excited when I get to actually shoot with that. And this is no different. This is actually a really nice lens. Now this is using the Sony E-mount cameras. So it's an E-mount lens. I've been using two different cameras, the a7R4 and the a7 III. I've been out and about, I've been indoors. I haven't just used this lens for macro because Generally, in my experience with macro lenses, yes, obviously they're great for macro because that's literally the whole point, but they tend to make great portrait lenses as well. They can even make just great all-rounders depending on the focal length. Now, obviously, this is a slightly longer focal length, 105 millimeters, which makes it actually really good for portrait as well as for macro. Less of maybe an all-rounder that you might get with something like a 30 mil or a 50 mil macro, but certainly you can double this up for portraits as well as macro, which I always think is really good because unless you are specifically a macro photographer, it's good to be able to get multiple uses out of your lens, whether you use something for portrait as well as general use and landscape and things like that, or in this case, macro and then portrait as well. I have done a little bit of landscape with this lens as well, because actually a long focal length can give you a slightly different perspective on landscapes, which I really, really like. But let's talk about image quality first of all, and then we can get into everything else as well. So first things first, image quality with this lens. Now, I have found that this is a nice, sharp, lens, especially in the center. But whether you're doing macro photography very, very close up, like for example, on leaves or berries or anything like that, you are getting very, very nice, sharp images. And whether you're doing that or you're doing portraits, oh, working with the eye autofocus in the Sony cameras, which is just really quite unbeatable. It works great for that as well. You get nice, sharp portraits. Skin looks great, which is which is actually really, really nice. Now, like I said, I did a little bit of landscape with this lens as well. And again, stopping down to something like F8, actually, it's still really nice and sharp right across the whole image. Now, this lens has a maximum aperture of F2.8. And that means that if you're taking shots like a portrait or just general shots, but from slightly further away than, you know, right up close, you're gonna be able to get actually some nice, depth of field in here. Nice shallow depth of field, but still retaining a lot of the features. So for example, a portrait, you're gonna get nice sharp features on your subject's face, but a nice blurred out background behind, which looks really, really nice. And I've got to say, the bokeh, the out of focus areas of the photo look great. They're really smooth, really nice. You're not getting loads of artifacts. You're not getting it where it all gets sort of busy and muddled. It just looks good. Even when I was out in the forest, taking some photos with kind of trees and things like that behind. Actually, the bokeh still looks really good. The colors, obviously, autumn look so nice, but I was really pleased to see that because you never know if the bokeh is gonna look a little bit, a little bit dodgy, but certainly that's not the case here. And when you get up close, you start taking the macro shots, that's where obviously this really shines. You can get incredibly close to your subject, whatever that may be, and actually, I took every macro shot that I took with this lens handheld, which is always something that I really, really appreciate. Now, of course, part of that is to do with the camera. It obviously helps having the five axis image stabilization in the Sony cameras. That works really well. Obviously being able to bump up the ISO a bit without worrying about too much noise means I can have a, a, a little bit of a higher shutter speed. So I don't have to worry about camera shake and I can still bring that aperture down to something like F8. So I'm getting a decent depth of field on the shot. And that's something that, you know, with macro lenses in particular, it's important to know that you can do that without worrying about noise and things like that, because otherwise your depth of field is just gonna be razor thin and that's just not gonna work out particularly well. And like I mentioned before, autofocus, super, super good, especially if you're doing portraits, the eye autofocus worked every single time. The actual autofocus, when you get really close to objects, actually 
was surprisingly good. Now, there was a little bit of where it tried to focus past things, but I think that's that's generally understandable. And with macro lenses, that can often be the case. If you're shooting something like a leaf, for example, it might try and focus behind the leaf just because it assumes that's what you're trying to do. And that's not really a failing of the lens. That's just something you have to deal with with macro photography if, if you're using autofocus. However, I did find that the autofocus did work particularly well when I was doing things like leaves and things like that. When I was able to get really close to it, it was able to hone in and keep that autofocus locked on when I was using the AFC mode. I didn't experience really much hunting at all, except for like when I say when there's a branch or something like that. I was trying to shoot a berry up close and it kept trying to focus to something behind it. But it, once it was locked on, there was no kind of hunting or anything like that. Now, one thing I would mention, I could hear the autofocus in the lens. It wasn't super loud, not really a problem either, but I could hear it in the lens. So it's worth being aware of that. I can't see that that's gonna cause anyone any problems really, but in terms of using this as a video lens or something like that, you're just not gonna really run into an issue there, I don't think, where you're picking up the noise of the lens because I just can't imagine the mic being right by the lens. But it is worth being aware of anyway. Now let's talk about what this lens is actually like to shoot with, what it feels like. Something which I really appreciate on this lens is the actual manual focus wheel here. It's really, really big, which it takes up almost half of the entire lens, which means when you're holding this, it's so easy to manually focus, which for macro photography is obviously a big deal. So I really, really appreciate that. It's also nicely weighted. You know, it's not too stiff, but it's certainly not loose. And it means you can make very micro adjustments, which obviously, again, for macro photography, pretty important. There's also an aperture ring on the lens, which is always nice. I always like that on a lens going from f2.8 to f22. And of course, you can set it to auto as well. And there's even a switch to lock that in so that you're not going to change that once you've actually set that. Otherwise, you've got controls and switches that you'd probably expect. So you've got the AF and MF switch. You've got the click so you can de-click the aperture ring or have it clicked. I'd probably always have this particular one clicked, but you can de-click it if you want to as well. And then you've got a button for AF lock as well. Now, of course, it does come with a lens hood as well, which sits really nicely on the front of the lens there. Doesn't take up too much space, not too much extra length but it feels pretty good. It's not too flimsy. I think it's made of plastic, but it's certainly not flimsy and it just screws off like that nice and easy. Now the lens actually feels really nice on the front of these Sony cameras. So here on the front of the a7R4, it really doesn't feel front heavy, but it's big enough to get your hand around it for a nice good grip. And then of course you've got the focus wheel there, but it's not so big that it's gonna cause you any issues. It's not gonna take up loads of room in a camera bag or anything like that, but it feels good on the front of these cameras. I like it, I really like it. Ultimately, I like when a macro lens can double up for things like portraits and of course general use as well. It gives it kind of a wider use than just this one slightly niche use of macro photography. And this certainly does that. 105 mil, great for portraits. And of course, you can do things with landscape and general use as well. It's a nice, easy lens to get used to and the image quality is gonna give you really, really nice results. So definitely, if you're interested in macro photography, this is a great lens to look at. You know, the Sigma art lenses are just so good. They're just so nice for image quality and build quality. They're just, oh, difficult to beat, to be honest. But even if you're not interested in macro photography, it's worth a look at this lens because it can do so much for you. And actually, until you've properly tried macro photography, it's difficult to write it off because it's such an interesting and different form of photography. Now there's full links to this lens down in the description. So you can go and check the lens out for yourself, price, spec, description, all of that fun stuff. If you have any questions about the lens, of course, pop it down in the comments below. Any thoughts as well, I'd love to hear them. So pop them all down there as well. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe as well, because there's new stuff all the time, tutorials, reviews, all kinds of stuff. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.